Hello again. This video is meant to be a long delayed response to Richie Peep's request for some elucidation on political ecology. Now, the simple answer to what is political ecology is that it is a paradigmatic discipline that combines the approaches of political economy which tends to ignore the ecological conditions in which humans exist with the discipline of human ecology which unfortunately tended to ignore institutions. That, <laughs> that tells you a lot, doesn't it? So really that just begs the question what is political economy and what is human ecology? And those are pretty deep questions. I would say political economy, although it wasn't called that at least until the late 19th and possibly well into the 20th century, traces its roots back to the late 17th century. Um, and it had, because of its origins, the weakness of having a focus on Western thought and Western models of culture. Human ecology is a lot more recent. It's a 20th century thing uh, that focuses on man and his utilization and interaction with the resources around him. Um, big oversimplifications there, but it's the best I can do. Um, Probably I've read 15 books on the subject of political ecology and uh, another 30 or so that were peripherally related to it or political economy and uh, there is no one definitive work that I can point you to. So let's see if I can simplify this with, a, with an illustration. Consider, consider the ancient civilizations of Pharaonic Egypt and uh, Greece. Egypt was what's called a hydraulic civilization. Basically, they were living in a desert that had the Nile as a fresh water source. And in order to sustain a civilization, everybody had to do what he was supposed to do, when he was supposed to do it. And this resulted in a political system that was very hierarchical and uh, had no room for personal freedom. Really, it was uh, a, 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 you know, a pyramidal structure, which is probably not coincidental, with the pharaoh at the top, who was himself not really a free man. He had extensive obligations in the religious and governmental and economic sphere of the Egyptian uh, society. And I'm not going to get into how that all developed because that's a long story. But now contrast that to Greece where the economy or I should say the food production was dependent not on irrigation but it was dependent on rainfall so that meant that anyone who could hold, defend and farm his land could produce enough food to support himself and his family and have a surplus which led to prosperity which led to there being not just one person at the top, but several people at the top. Um, an aristocracy formed. And uh, this led to political infighting and all the rest of Greek history, which I'm not going to go into. But the bottom line is that human nature was not enough to explain the difference between Greece and Egypt, nor was human culture 
or just uh, plain old economics. It was the ecology of the situation that produced mixed in with those other factors. The profound difference in the development of Egyptian versus Greek culture and government and all the rest. So this is why politics and ecology come together even today when we, when we talk about uh, what's going on in, in Africa or South America or here. It's a question of, of the climate, the resources available, the political traditions, and so on and so on and so on. It's all very complicated. I wish there was a definitive book that I could recommend just on political ecology, but I can't. It's a, it's a living paradigmatic discipline, and it's kind of like trying to hit a moving target. There is one work that I keep coming across in the sources by Susan Stonich, written in 1993, and I'll put a reference to that up there. Um, I'm going to put up two more. One because it's just a really good book and it talks a lot about political ecology. It's called Stonehenge and the Indo-European Tradition. I'll put a reference to that up there. The final work is more of a political economy work, although again it was written in 1873 and political economy was not really a word that was used, a term that was used. It really does fit into that mold. Um, one of the greatest books ever written, I think, one of the most important books I've ever, ever read, and one of the least known. Um, it's by Fustal Collange, and it's called The Ancient City. Uh, this man was the teacher of the founder of the science of sociology, and I'll be, probably be referring to it in later videos. It is very much focused on Western culture, which is, I think, probably the greatest feeling overall of political economy is that it all began with and continues to, despite efforts to overcome the weakness, focus on Western thought, Western ideology, Western culture. Human ecology is just the opposite, actually. And uh, the combining of the two into political ecology is the way of uh, cultural anthropology today, I think, and uh, the way of the future. Hopefully that gives you an idea. And uh, if I talk about political ecology again, it will just be as a reference to say, for example, the political ecology of situation X is an explanation for condition Y. Anyway, I will be looking forward to the comments on this video and uh, looking forward to them with some trepidation because I probably won't be up to the task of making comprehensive responses to any of them, but uh, please comment and let me know where I need to uh, clarify. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you later.